Sometimes after we prepare a solution or determine its concentration, we also need to create a dilute solution. We need to dilute it down, and when we do that, we do so by adding more of the solvent and not any more of the solute. For example, if you make orange juice from frozen concentrated orange juice, what you're pouring into the pitcher from the can is actually the concentrated orange juice. It has all the solute molecules that we're going to have in that solution. When I go to add the water, here I'm adding my three cans of water, I'm adding more solvent, but I'm not adding any more solute, just more solvent. And as a result, my concentration becomes lower and it is considered to be a more dilute solution. So when I look at the original can of the concentrated orange juice, or at the pitcher of orange juice, what I see is the amount of particles that are juice, those solute particles, there's the exact same number in the can as there is in the pitcher of juice. The difference between these two is the amount of solvent molecules, or the amount of water. Our pitcher has more solvent, more water molecules, and so when I find my concentration, which we've talked about our concentration being our amount of our solute, over the amount of solution, not solvent, but solution. We've not changed the amount of solute, but we have changed the total amount of the solution. So we have a dilute solution here in the pitcher. So this is dilute, and the, this is more concentrated. Now, how do we know how much to add if we want to create a certain solution? Well, there's a calculation to show us just that. So we can do the same thing in chemistry as we do with our frozen orange juice. We're preparing a less concentrated solution from a more concentrated one. A perfect example of this is looking at, say, buying HCl or hydrochloric acid. If I need one molar hydrochloric acid for an experiment, I'm not going to order a container of one molar hydrochloric acid. I might order a container of 6 molar or even 12 molar hydrochloric acid, and then here I can dilute it down. Now, I'm not paying for somebody to ship a bunch of water to me. All I'm worried about is how much HCl is in there. So when I look at my sample, if this were my concentrated HCl that I bought, I say that the number of particles here, the number of solute molecules in the one on the left, is the same as the number of the solute molecules on the right. The total volume of the solution has changed because we've added more of our solvent, just like we did with our orange juice. No different here when we're dealing now with a chemical or a solution that we'd use in a chemistry lab. So now we have an equation which will help us figure out the relationship between the concentration and volume of our concentrated solution and the concentration and volume of our dilute or less concentrated solution. Now it doesn't really matter what we call C1 and V1 versus C2 and V2, whether the C1 V1 is concentrated and the C2 V2 is dilute or vice versa. What matters is, is that the solution that I'm talking about concentration one of, I've got to make sure that the volume is of that particular concentration. So I need to make sure I pair up my data correctly. So C stands for the concentration of the solution under some initial conditions the volume under some initial conditions, the concentration 2 is the concentration under some final or dilute conditions, and V2 is under that dilute conditions. For the most part, we'll use this for concentrated, this for dilute, just because we generally start with our concentrated solution and we're creating that dilute solution. But really, it doesn't matter. Now note this is for dilutions only. Some of you may have learned in high school chemistry that you could use this in titration calculations. One, we're not doing titration calculations in this course, and two, this does not work because it does not work at all times. So this is only for dilutions. When we're talking about the same substance, we have the same, same solute and solvent. We're just changing the amounts of them, but the identity does not change. So let's look at an example of how we would use this. So the first thing is we want to look at our equation. So we have C1V1 equals C2V2. And what I'm actually going to do is as I go through my problem, I'm going to make a list of what information I know. So a solution was 1.45 liters. So I'm going to go ahead and just call this V1 because I came to it first, really no other reason, of a 0.875 molar NaOH. Now note 
that these two numbers go together. In this case, they're written close together in the problem. That's not always the case. Make sure you read the problem carefully and from the context of the problem, determine which information goes together. So now I have C1 equals 0 0.875 molar because those two pieces of information go together. I continue to read. It was diluted, so that's a big clue that I'm going to be dealing with a dilution because it's diluted to a new volume, so that way you go look for that V2 equals 2.25 liters, and it says what is the new concentration. So a couple of things clue me in that this is a dilution problem. First, the word dilution, diluted, it could be dilution, adding additional solvent, things like that are what we're looking for. I also notice that I'm dealing with the same substance here. I'm just dealing with NaOH. There's no chemical reaction going on. I'm just adding more of my solvent so my solution volume increases. Now I can go back and plug in what I know into my equation. So I know C1 is 0 0.875 molar and V1 is 1.45 liters. My v C2 is my unknown and my V2 is 2.25 liters. Sorry about that, ran out of room. Now I can solve for C2. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually figure out what the left side is equal to. So we have 0.875 times 1.45. And what I end up with is on the left I have 1.27 equals my C2 times 2.25 liters. I'll rewrite that so it's a little bit easier to see. Now I can divide both sides by 2.25 so that I can get the C2 by itself. And I get that C2 equals 0 0.564 molar. So a couple of things to notice here. One, I have three sig figs in my answer because all my numbers going into the problem had three sig figs. My unit of concentration here is the same as the unit of concentration of C1. And note that my units of volume were the same on both sides. Now in this case, we have molarity and liters for our volume. We can actually have any units that we have for a concentration and a volume. The only thing that matters is that they're the same on both sides. So if I have molarity for C1, I must have molarity for C2. I had liters for volume 1, I have liters for volume 2. I could have just as easily have done this problem if these were both in milliliters. I would still would have gotten the same answer. Again, with the concentration, it could be a molarity, it can be a mass percent or volume percent, it doesn't matter, as long as my units of concentration are the same. That's what I'm worried about. Now, the other thing I want to look at is, does this answer make sense? So I started with the solution that was 0.875 molar. It says it was diluted. The volume gets bigger. I'm expecting my C2, my final concentration, to be lower than my initial concentration because I'm creating a dilute solution, and that is, in fact, what I get. So this looks like a reasonable answer. There's lots of different ways you can give dilution problems. We can look at solving for C2 or C1 instead of C2. We can look at solving for V2. Any of these, we have three, and we're going to solve for that fourth one. If you have any questions, please feel free to come see me or post a question on Piazza.